So one important thing to be able to recognize with sugars is determine whether the carbons of the sugar are chiral. Um, this is important because you'll eventually want to use this information or this ability to be able to determine things about stereoisomers, like is it a D or an L version of a stereoisomer? Is it an antimer, a diastereomer, an epimer? So terms like that require you to know if, it's a, if there are chiral carbons and which ones are chiral. I have links down below to some of those other videos if you're interested, but for this one, let's just determine whether a carbon is chiral. There's four different chiral carbons in this structure, and so we're going to go through each one individually and determine whether they are chiral or not. And basically, the, 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 the definition, or what we'll, we'll use as our definition is, if there are four different groups attached to the carbon, then it is chiral. So let's look at the first carbon. Attached to the first carbon are four different groups. We have this group a hydroxyl group, a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and this big guy down here. And so we can see that two of the groups are hydrogens, so that carbon would be uh, achiral or it's not chiral at all. Let's take a look at the second carbon. The second mm -hmm. carbon right here, well, right off the bat, it's bound twice, two times a double bond to an oxygen. So right there, that removes it from being chiral. Mm -hmm. Anytime you have a carbon double bonded to something, it's going to be achiral uh, or triple bonded. So if you see a carbon-carbon double bond on, on that carbon, uh, that's going to be achiral. In sugars, we don't see carbon-carbon double bonds, but we do see these carbon-oxygen double bonds, and so therefore that one is achiral. The next carbon, let's look at the four groups. We have a hydrogen. We have this big group up here. We have a hydroxyl group, and we have this group. None of those are the same. Those are four different groups. So the third carbon that we're studying here, that carbon is chiral. So that's our first chiral carbon. And then let's look at the last carbon. We see a hydroxyl group, a hydrogen, another hydrogen, and this big old group up here. And so notice it's bound twice to two different, it's bound to two hydrogen groups. And so that one is achiral. So in our study, the only chiral carbon is the number three carbon right here. So now let me uh, tell you one of the major pitfalls um, that happen when we try to determine which carbon is chiral. Um, and let's go ahead and let's look at the number two carbon right here. So let's evaluate the number two carbon and determine whether it's chiral or achiral. Um, what I, what is one of the major things I typically see are is when we evaluate the four groups on there, some will just take not the four groups, but the four atoms that are attached. So they'll look at, they'll look at these four atoms. And you'll see that there's a hydrogen, a carbon, an oxygen, and another carbon. And they'll say, whoa, it's bound to two carbons, so therefore it's achiral. But the goal is not to look at the next atom. The goal, or the, the, how we evaluate this, is to look at the, the four groups. And so the four groups here are that group, that group, that group, and that group. And so notice none of the four groups are the same. And so therefore, since none of the four groups are the same, that carbon is chiral. So evaluated incorrectly and looking at just the next atom, uh, we get stuck in that we incorrectly evaluate whether that carbon is chiral or not. So make sure you're looking at the whole thing attached to the carbon, not just the next atom. So take a moment and evaluate this uh, sugar as a practice for which ca carbons are chiral. So pause the video. When you're done evaluating, come back and I'll walk through uh, these five carbons and we'll talk about which ones are chiral and which ones are not. Okay, so let's go through these uh, quick, go through these five carbons. We'll start with the first one up here at the top. And so this carbon right here, um, notice it has got a double bond to an oxygen. So again, anytime you have a double bond to anything else from a carbon, that's not chiral. So that's not chiral at all. 
So let's head down to the second one. Well, we already evaluated that one just a moment ago, and so we determined that one was chiral because it has four different groups on it. So that brings us down to the third carbon, or this carbon right here. Let's look at the four groups. I have this guy. I have that big group, that group, and that group. And if you look at those four groups, none of them are the same. And so that carbon, or the number three carbon, that one is chiral. Let's take a look at the next carbon in line. We have that group. We have that big group. We have that group, and we have that group. Again, none of the four are the same, so that one is chiral as well. And then we look at the final carbon in the group here, and I can see right off the bat I have a hydrogen here and a hydrogen there. So this is going to be a chiral. It doesn't matter what the other two are. I already have two that are the same, but just to identify those, there are the four groups, but two of them are the same, and so that one is a chiral. So in this structure, we had two chiral carbons. We had this one and that one are our two chiral carbons. Oh, and we had this one. We had three chiral carbons. Those are the three chiral carbons in the structure. The other two are not chiral or what we call achiral. If you're looking for some more carbohydrate videos, there's a link down below. We have several more. So if you're interested in other topics in, chiral, or in carbohydrate chemistry, you'll see those and they may help you out. Hopefully they help you out as well.